Mystery of Black Hollow Lane, Chapter 22, The Other Side of the Door. Emmy, get your hands off me. Emmy, it's all right. What's going on? The blinding light flickered off and a new light flooded the room. Emmy was in the chapel of the Round Tower Church and it wasn't Jonas holding her. It was Barlow. Madame Boyd stood in the entryway with her hand on her on an old light switch. Jack and Lola were standing behind her. Emmy pointed at the door that led to the tower. It's Jonas! He attacked me! Barlow let go of her and tore into the belfry. Madame Boyd walked toward her, the sound of her cane echoing off the floor. Emmy, what are you talking about? Her lips had gone white. Emmy looked at Jack and Lola. It wasn't Larrabee. It was Jonas the whole time. Lola swore and her mother didn't bother to admonish her. Admonish her. When you didn't meet me us back at the square, we went to get help, Lola said. Mum got Barlow, and when we told him the direction you took, he figured out where you'd come out up the tunnels. Emmy, Emmy, what were you saying about Jonas? Madame Boyd's voice cracked. He attacked me, Emmy said. At the top of the tower, I rang the bell and found the hidden door, and he... Emmy stopped. Why hadn't Jonas come through the door yet? He was right behind her. Barlow came through, back through the tower door. There's nobody in the belfry. No, that couldn't be right. He couldn't have escaped. He must have gone back into the tunnels. She ran back into the belfry and searched the stone floor. Where was the trap door? It was right here. The entrance to the tunnels was right here. But there was no handle, no latch, and all the stones looked the same. There was no light in the tunnels to show an outline. Emmy stumbled back into the church. Jonas was gone. She grabbed the back of the, one of the benches. The church was starting to spin. Madame Boy grabbed her arm. I think you'd better sit down. Emmy pulled her backpack off the shoulders and sank onto the bench. There was no way to prove what had happened. Nothing to back her up her story. She sat with her head in her hands until more teachers started pouring into the church. Who the devil broke into the tower? What's all this racket? Why is someone ringing the tower bell at four o'clock in the bloody morning? Emmy wrapped her arms around her middle and started to shake. There were so many people, so many questions. Madame Boyd put a gentle hand on Emmy's shoulder and looked at her with anxious eyes. I think Master Barlow and I can deal with this on our own. The other teachers filed out, muttering to each other about pranks and late night hijinks. All right, why don't you start at the beginning, Madame Boyd said. It took a long time for Emmy to get through the story. The only thing she left out was the medallions. Jonas would have killed her to get them, and she wasn't about to tell anyone else that they existed. She was vague about how they got down into the tunnels, but nobody asked for more details. They didn't interrupt her or ask any questions, though Madame Boyd pressed her lips tight together when Emmy talked about Jonas's night. When Emmy finally stopped talking, nobody said a word. She closed her eyes, her hands burned from the rope, and her shoulders ached from carrying her bag all night. She just wanted this to be over. That's quite a story, Master Barlow finally said, filled with very serious accusations. Emmy's lip wobbled. They didn't believe her. They probably all thought she was a liar, just trying to get out of being caught pulling a prank. Master Barlow's face was like stone. He kept staring at Emmy like he was trying to read her mind. We all know that there are students who will say anything to get out of trouble. A knot clenched inside Emmy's gut. She was going to be punished, maybe even expelled. But we also know that there are not one you are not one of those students. Hot tears stung Emmy's eyes. They believed her. It was going to be okay. Madame Boyd stood up and leaned on her cane. We should be able to pass this all off as a prank that went wrong. What do you mean? Lola said. Aren't we going to expose the order? Not this time. They're just too strong. The order has a lot of connections. Besides, the board won't allow the school's reputation to get dragged down through the mud. But they can't just let Jonas keep working here. After all, he's done, Lola said. I don't, I doubt we'll find him now, Barlow said. This lane sketches on for miles and Jonas knows, Jonas knows if he stuck around, he'd be facing serious charges. I'm sure he's long gone. The knot in Emmy's stomach loosened a little. Jonas was gone and it didn't sound like he was coming back. Then she frowned. Barlow called the tunnels the lane. She'd only heard order members call it that. What about Laramie? Jack asked. He might not be Brother Loyola, but he's part of the order too. Madame Boyd smiled grimly. 
Jameson Larby has been teaching at the school for years and he's extremely friendly with the board. It's Emmy's word against his and I think we all know whose word those old snobs would take seriously. Lola threw herself back on the bench and huffled, but she didn't protest. Boyd was right. They all knew no one would believe Emmy. I think Emmy should be checked out at the medical centre, Madame Boyd said. Then we'll call her mother and... No! Emmy jumped to her feet. You can't tell my mom. Emmy and... Emmy, I am responsible for what happens to you at school, Madame Boyd said. It would be inexcusable for me not to tell her when you have been in such danger. But she'll blab! Emmy wasn't just worried about her mom freaking out. She was worried about what her mom might say to the countless reporters who would take her phone call in a heartbeat. My mom will never stay quiet about the order. They'll come after her. Madame Boyd pursed her lips. I'll consider it. In the meantime, you need to get to the medical center. I'll, I'll take her, Barlow said quickly. Good, I'll take the old others back to the house. Madame Boyd ushered Jake and Lola to the door. Emmy stood up and threw her backpack over her aching shoulders. She just wanted to get some sleep. She walked toward the door, but Master Barlow wasn't following her. Aren't we going to the medical center? In a minute, we should probably finish our conversation first. Emmy shivered. There was no beat and no heat in the church, and the wind went sliced through every crack in the stone walls. Did you want to ask me something? Barlow stood up. You had a medallion, right? That's how you got into the lane. Emmy didn't say anything. He had called it the lane again. My guess is that you have an entire box filled with them. Something started pulsing in Emmy's neck. How did you know that? I'll explain everything, but first I need to tell. You need to tell me what happened to that box. I threw it out the window, Emmy said, into the sea. Barlow gripped a church pew and closed his eyes. Their destruction is not what I would have wanted. Why wouldn't he want the medallions destroyed? Unless, but he couldn't be. Images start flashing in Emmy's head. Barlow trying to get her to leave Latin society. Barlow annoyed when he had frowned, found out about the school's founding. Barlow looking flustered when she said her father's name. Barlow, Barlow. You're part of the order. She dashed toward the door, but Barlow stepped in front of her. Emmy, please, let me explain. Help! She tried to shove her way past him, but he was too strong. Madame Boyd, come back! Barlow's part of the order! Calm down, Emmy, I'm not part of the order. I've spent all year trying to keep you away from them. What are you talking about? I've tried to get you away from Latin society and tried to keep you from telling anyone about Tom, but it was already too late. Emmy stopped pushing. Tom, you knew my dad? Barlow nodded. I still know him. I was the one who told him you were coming to Wellsworth. I saw your name on the late enrollment list. I've been helping him communicate with you all year. But, but that must mean you know where he is. I wish I did, Barlow sank into his bench. We figured out a secure method of communication a long time ago. One that doesn't require me to know his whereabouts. It's safer for all of us. The pounding in Emmy's chest slowed down and was replaced by a dull ache. Does anyone else know where he is? Barlow fiddled with the collar on his pajama shirt. Thomas Allen is a complicated man with a complicated history. He and I shared a flat with Madame Boyd and another girl. We all became very close. Margaret needed extra help at first because her knee had been badly damaged in, well, an incident in our last year at school. An incident? Like an accident? Madame Boyd was a, a girl who was injured in the initiation ritual, the one that went wrong. Barlow tipped his head. I didn't know you knew about that. You probably know a lot of things that would surprise me. Emmy looked at the floor. She leaned a lot about. She learned a lot about the order, but still didn't know where her dad was. We started working against the order, trying to undermine them. Tom was the most brazen. He was still technically a member of the order, and when we had an opportunity, came up, crippled them. He took it. The order was coming after him, so he faked his death in a car crash. I was the only one who knew he was alive. As far as I know, I'm still the only one who knows, aside from you now. What about Madame Boyd? Emmy asked. Barlow shook his head. She always thought the order killed Tom, although she doesn't know what to believe now. She was completely shocked when she found out he was your father. I pretended I didn't know anything about it. The more I tell her, the more likely it is that the order might go after her. She made... She made me swear not to tell anybody about my dad. Barlow nodded. She was desperate to make sure no one else ever found out about your good connection with Tom. She knew you'd be in danger and she didn't want you to draw 
you drawn into this mess? He cleared his throat. I can only imagine how difficult it's been for you, wondering what had happened to him, wondering if he had just left. His voice trailed off. Emmy tucked her hair behind her ear. Barlow had once said he had a complicated relationship with his father too. Maybe he understood her situation pretty well, but she still wasn't ready to talk about it, at least not with the person who had helped her father stay hidden all these years. I can tell you this, Emmy. Tom never would have left you unless it was absolutely necessary for your protection. He loves you. Has he ever actually said that he loves me? Barlow looked at his hands. We don't generally discuss things of a personal nature. Then maybe you don't know him as well as you think. Barlow didn't say anything. He just kept folding up his pyjama collar and then fixing it again. Why didn't you want the medallions destroyed, Emmy asked. Isn't it a good thing if the order can never get to them? If Tom hadn't, if Tom wanted them destroyed, he would have done it ages ago. He wanted them to stay hidden until we could figure out how best to use them, Barlow said. But it's probably for the best. Now that they're gone, there's no reason for the order to come after you. Emmy shifted in her chair and rubbed the back of her neck. Every inch of her ached. We should get you to the medical center if you can see it. A nurse. Emmy nodded. It had been the longest night of her life. The sun was coming up over the cliffs now, sending a little bit of warmth through Emmy's bare arms. She and Barlow would walk through the path that led back down to the school. There's one thing I don't understand, Emmy said. If you want to keep me away from the order, why did you have me wash walls where the secret entrance is? Barlow smiled. I never dreamed you'd find the entrance, especially because I specifically told you not to wash that wall. I'm not used to students taking an extra punishment. I guess I underestimated your drive to be the best at everything, even detention. Barlow stopped walking and looked at Emmy. That drive must seem that drive seems to have served you well tonight. I'm sure your father would be very proud of you. Emmy shut her eyes up tight. She wasn't sure about anything when it came to her father, but she didn't want to cry again. She turned back toward the school, and they walked in silence the rest of the way. Oh, we found out so much. Oh.